Okay, so as you can see, mashallah, we have really, I mean, how many pages? It's over 35 pages or something, about 35 pages. And all of them are ayat about the aql, about ayin qaflam. So it is the surah of Yunus, ayah number uh, 15 up to uh, 17, 17. A'udhu billahi min shaytan rajim. وَإِذَا تُسْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُنَا بَيِّنَاتٍ قَالَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَرْجُونَ لِقَاءَنَا إِئِتِنَا بِقُرْآنٍ غَيْرِ هَذَا أَوْ بَدِّرْ Means when our verses will be recited in front of them, some group among them, some of them will say, um, some of them who do not believe on the Day of Judgment, they will say, إِئِتِنَا بِقُرْآنٍ غَيْرِ Bring us some different Qur'an. Why? Because they actually disliked something in it. You know one thing, mashallah, we now are experiencing, we're waking up. Okay, so now we're understanding the actual message of Quran and the message of which is made of, fabricated by, this, by these people. And we see the difference between the messages. Mm -hmm. So the message of Quran is so unique. Okay, it fits everyone and everything, you know. Mm -hmm. When the fabricated message of them people is only for just group of a people which will not fit with others. As soon as you take it out to a different country, they will ask you, what is this? What all of this uh, thing is about? But when you take, for example, the real message of Quran, wherever you take it, and even if they will be aliens, even if you offer it to them, they will be amazed. They say, yeah, actually it is a good thing, you know. So, because when Rasulullah was reading it to the uh, Qurayshi Mushrik, so they disliked it, so they asked the Prophet, to bring different Qur'an, because they did not like it, okay? Or change some certain thing in it, they are asking Qurayshis, Qul, uh, Allah says to the Prophet, say to them, Ma min nafsi. I cannot change it from myself. In illa ma I'm just following whatever is revealed to me. Inni akhafu in asaytu rabbi adhaba yawmin azim. I'm scared if I will disobey the orders of my Lord, I am scared to be punished in the in very uh, great day. قُلْ لَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ مَا تَلَوْتُهُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَلَا أَدْرَاكُمْ بِهِ Say to them that it could be possible if Allah wouldn't choose me to be a prophet, so then I wouldn't read it for you, I wouldn't recite it for you, and then I wouldn't teach you what it means, what it would mean. فَقَدْ لَبِثْتُ فِيكُمْ عُمُرًا مِنْ قَبْلِ I did spend some certain time with you before the revelation. أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Don't you use your aql, don't you use your brain. So now, what is the field in which Allah is actually asking us to use the brain? So it is, uh, I'm not lying, Prophet is saying, I'm not lying and I do not have a right to change what is revealed to me. And if Allah wanted, I wouldn't read it for you. Mm -hmm. I spent some certain time with you guys here, 40 years. So don't you use your brain. So it is all of them is just predicates. Allah is just giving. I lived with you, so you know my character. If I'm a liar, so you, you could say that I'm a liar, but you know me. Okay? And then, if I'm not a liar, I'm saying that it is from God. Means I cannot change it from myself. Okay? Don't you use your brain. So I would say it is maybe something to do with psychology also. Because you know me that... My nature is not the nature of a liar. Even God is giving them right to decide if someone is prophet. You yeah. Are based on brain. Exactly. Exactly. Use your again. Brain to decide again. If this yeah. Good is point. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Finding in the person. So if brain can decide if he is prophet or not, so then brain can decide if he is scholar or not also. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. So brain. So it is quite powerful thing that Allah has given us. Brain is quite powerful thing. <clears throat> okay, so the next, uh, the next is again Surat Yunus, Ayah number 50, 51. And we have sent to the tribe of Ad, their brother Hud, means one of them. So Hud uh, told them, Ya Qawmi, O my tribe, U'budullaha, worship, okay, or make ibadah of only one God. Ma min ma lakum min ilahin. غير, غير. There is no any God beside him. 
obviously I do ask this question quite uh, often in terms of the worshipping, the meaning of worshipping. And just to, just uh, very briefly, so most of us, we don't know the meaning of Ibadah, okay, so, so uh, the meaning of Ibadah is the last point of your hope and the last point of your fear. So you worship that thing. Okay, so for example, let's suppose that you have been diagnosed by a very serious illness, may Allah forbid. Okay, so now there is hope. So first hope is the surgery, but you, in your mind you say, if it will not happen, so then there are like a professional, very expert uh, doctors in London, for example, uh, clinics. So second hope is there. Next hope is maybe like a alternative medicine, Chinese acupuncture. So it will carry on being, being, being. And whenever you lose one hope, next hope will come. But your hope will end on something. And when it will not approve itself, your hope, you will lose your hope. So the last point of your hope is the point of worshipping. So whatever your last hope will go to be stopped, that is the thing or that is the one that you worship. Okay? And the fear is the same thing. Last point of the fear. Okay? So for example, you are afraid, for example, in my hand I have got a gun. Now you are afraid of a bullet. But your source of that fear is not in the bullet, but in the gun. Isn't it? But, and even that is not the main source. The main source is in me, in my decision. So it will carry on being, being, going, going, and it has to stop somewhere. That is the point that you worship. So shirk, it is your hope, the last bit of your hope, last chance and the last chance of the fear, falling on someone or something beside God. That you are mushrik. But what about practicing, for example, slaughtering for someone's sake, making such that that is, it, it is just physical things, if it will be attached with that two things which I'm talking about, means you are committing shirk, or otherwise it is not shirk. It could be major sin. For example, making sajda in Islam is prohibited. In the previous religions, it was permissible to know God, anyone beside God, isn't it? Yusuf alayhi salam, his brothers, angels to Adam alayhi salam. Am I right? Mm -hmm. So it was permissible. Why? Because it's not worshipping. So, it will be worshipping if you do it with intention, with, with that intention. Okay, so, but without that belief, it's not, uh, it's not Ibad, it's not Kufr, but it is a major sin, according to Maturidis and Asharis. So, making Sajda, for example, let's suppose that you're in front of a king, Persian king, okay, very oppressive, and in his culture, that if you will not make, for example, Sajda, so it is their habit. And with that intention, you make says that because it is their way of greeting each other, the kings. Is that kufr? We say no. Because her intention is greeting. Mm. But because it was forbidden, prohibited, okay, so it is sin, not permissible. Okay? And the same thing is about, for example, bowing. Mm. Okay, for example, martial arts. So it is their custom. Before fighting, they will just bow to each other. So is that shirk or is it first of all is it kufr? We say if your last bit of fear lies on this person, on your partner, then it is kufr, yes. But if it is not then, so we say it is not kufr, one thing. But is it sin? I say it's not sin. Because it is their way of greeting each other. Okay. So isn't it that uh, Rasulullah forbidden us from um, uh, making sajda? Question. Is just slightly bowing. Is that sajda also? Of course not. Sajda is when you put your forehead on the ground. That is the meaning of sajda. Okay, and also bowing, and I wouldn't call it as like a ruku, because ruku is when you can hit your uh, by your hand, you can hit the knees. Okay, but in martial arts, you will be on the degree in which you will not be able to hit, isn't it? So what is that? We say it's just custom, habit. So is it okay? We say perfectly fine. No shirk, no kufr, no even sin. Okay, so. Physical, like worshipping, for example, going round, tawaf, is it kufr? We say if it would be kufr, so it would be kufr to go round of the Kaaba. Kaaba is cre created thing, it's not a god. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Okay? 
but because we go around the Kaaba, but our hope and fear does not lie on Kaaba, but on someone else. So that's why we're not making shirk or kufr. You understand? Okay? So, unfortunately, this ibadah, an opposite of ibadah is shirk, that is very, very messed up, you know? So, um, because of that, just we're just making like a, his kafir that, yeah. So, like, Sheikh, this is actually a big issue because we have things like graduation ceremonies. Yeah, yeah. And um, we will not go. Yeah, yeah. Because you have to bow down, you know, when you receive your certificate. Uh, okay. So, like, a lot of people, yeah. including myself, we yeah. didn't go. Yeah, yeah. Because this was one of the problems. No, you know, it's just uh, custom. But you have to uh, kneel, isn't it? When you no, get it. just like bow down, not kneel. Don't no, you have to kneel? No. No, no, no. not necessary. Not so, Sheikh, is only sajda so, prohibited? So, ruku is not prohibited? No. Because I know in, like, say, some countries, to apologize, you bow, but yeah, yeah. like ruku, um, like, say, like this say, much, you know? We say but perfectly fine. So perfectly even up fine. to ruku yeah, amount? Yeah, that's fine, yeah. Wow. So, so many people could, because you know, I even yeah. know that Japanese guy, he's mm. student of knowledge. Remember Imam Takuya? Oh, yeah. So he, he had, they have, in their country, they don't bow, it's big offense to yeah. everyone, you know? Yeah, yeah. So they had some complicated excuse to allow bowing, but if they knew Martyridi's position, no, they because, would be so happy. No, because uh, what, what is Kufr? Kufr is uh, making Ibadah to someone beside God. Yeah. And what is that? Ibadah. Ibadah is in your heart, actually. Yeah. But physical thing is actually uh, following the Fiqhi Ayat and Ahadith. Mm. Okay? So if you remember that Abu Musa, or I think it was Abu Musa or Mu'ad, Abu Musa most likely, Allah, coming and making Sajjah to the Prophet. Rasulullah said, do not do it. Because if it would be allowed, so anyway, this hadith we have got our own catch on this. But anyway, just because brothers love this hadith. Mm. So, Rasulullah is not saying, uh, uh, refresh your iman, because you committed Why? Because, um, so because like a uh, sajda of that, uh, of uh, that sahabi, it was just greeting sajda. Mm. Because that what uh, Yemenis used to do it. Okay, mm. learning it from Persians. Okay. So even, for example, in Maliki Madhab, it is makruh to make sajda with intention of ta'zim, not even haram. Mm. Shaykh, doesn't the Qur'an itself say don't bow down? There is no anything like really? that. Really? Mm. So Allah says don't make ibad of anyone else. Right, okay. So ibadah is different to the sajda, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. So ibadah is extreme level of the hope, I mean the last point of the hope and last point of a fear. Okay. Yeah, right, Shaykh, we never knew that, like what is worshipping. Yeah. Yeah, 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 No, no, because uh, as we can see, mashallah, now Quran has been sent, but the main message of Quran is just few practical things, halal, haram, just shoes, just, I mean, like, uh, like uh, up to the half of the shin. And so that is the main message, and bead, okay? But the main message beside, behind that is just behind the curtains, you know? Mm -hmm. But isn't it that Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسَ إِلَّا Only for one reason, so they can make ibadah. So, main message of Quran, main message of all of the prophets, he just destroyed, wiped away because of few fabricated understanding, incorrect understanding of the religion, you know. Yeah, so it's... Um, now again, for example, I, I was unable to give you solid opinion about the fawahish. Isn't it that, uh, for example, Quran has got main three orders and main three prohibitions. Fawahish is one of them, main three prohibitions. And I am, as like an expert of Aqidah and Fiqh, spending, for example, so many years, okay, 20, 25 years, I was unable to give you the solid uh, opinion, because there is no solid opinion, there is big disagreement. Is it possible that God sends a message, and it will have main three prohibitions in the message, and we don't know one of them? Or not even one, but two of them. Okay, وَيَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُ بِالْعَدْلِ Allah orders for justice. Well, Ihsan, okay, people understand that Ihsan is to worship God as if you, if you would see Him. Mm. But when you go to Quran, Allah uses for many different meanings, you know. For example, Allah uses it for uh, uh, feeding the uh, poor and the uh, orphan uh, kids. Mm. Says that is Ihsan. Do you understand? So there is something is happening in there, you know. Ya Amr bil Adl, justice, Ihsan. And connecting, giving, gifting, granting to the relatives. And forbids you from three things. So, we don't have agreed upon opinion. 
okay, wal baghi oppression. Oppression we know, alhamdulillah, because people know, so that's why we know. Okay, fahsha and munkar, what is that? Some say this, some say that. There is no like agreed upon solid, and there is no even majority, you know. It's just one said this, one said that, two, three said that, you know. Just that. So it's a bit strange, you know, it is a bit strange. So, ibad is one of them things. If you just go and stop, for example, mm -hmm. forget about layman, Muslim just namazi man, but go and ask the top shuyukh, top scholars, during the lecture, because if you just email them, because they don't know, they will never answer, you know, and they will have an excuse, because I, I'm getting thousands of uh, uh, emails, you know. During the lecture, go and ask them, what is the meaning of ibadah? You will never get solid answer. Why? Because that's the main message of Islam, so that's why we don't know it. Okay, so anyway, um, so uh, Hud alayhi salam, what did he say? Qala ya qawmi, O my tribe, O my nation, u'budullah, okay, make ibadah to God, worship God. Ma lakum min ilahin ghayru, there is no any God for you beside, beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In antum illa muftarun, you are those only who are just muftarun, making up a story. I think... Hud is not talking only to his nation, but he's talking to us also. Religion is one thing. Our shoe of making a totally different scenario, totally different thing. Ya Qawmi, O my nation, la as'alukum alayhi, I'm not asking any payment, any money for my message. Okay, so it means I'm doing it not for any benefit, means I'm doing it for something different. In ajri illa ala ladhi fatarani, and my, uh, my reward, and my payment is only uh, upon the one who created me. Afala taqinun. Don't you use your aql. So in which field uh, Allah is asking us to use the aql? So who the what is he talking about in here? So it is ibadah. I think ibadah is the matter of aqidah, isn't it? Ibadah. As well as, I'm not asking for any benefit. It is actually, again, aqidah. So I'm prophet, okay, and... I'm not doing it to get some benefit, but my like uh, my grant and my uh, like uh, uh, payment is upon the one who created me. So don't think that I'm doing it just uh, because I want some benefit, okay? And the like a uh, brainy person, like sane person, doesn't do these type of things for no reason. It means I'm doing it for some reason, and that is that I'm a prophet. So I say all of this is pure aqidah. Allah is actually encouraging us to use the brain in the issue of aqidah, ibadah. Okay, ibadah. The next is Surah Yusuf. <coughs> it's very first two ayat. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alif lam ra. Tilka ayatul kitab al-mubin. Most of us disagree with God in the word of al-mubin. These are the verses of the book, which is obvious. Mubin in Arabic language means two things. Uh, obvious for itself and Mubin clarifying for other things. Okay. Inna anzalnahu Qur'anan Arabiyan. We have revealed it. So Allah is speaking to, the, to Rasul Islam and through him to the people of that time. We made it to be... Arabian in Arabic language, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ So that how you may understand it, you may use your brain. Okay, so can you imagine if a revelation would be in Persian and Prophet is in Saudi Arabia, for example, Arabian Peninsula. They would say, well, we don't understand it. So Allah says, it is in your language. Don't you use your brain. I say, Allah is actually, this is the maybe the most strongest ayah. Means, all of Quran is something that brain can get engaged, isn't it? So we made, we made Quran to be in Arabic so you can use your brain. Means everything is Quran is understandable. If brothers say brain is not understanding, they have to give us mutawatir hadith to exclude some bits and bytes of the, uh, for example, Quran from this general type. We maturidis exclude mutashabihad, not by ahad, not by mashur hadith, not by mutawatir hadith, but by Quran itself. Minhu ayatun muhkamatun hunna ummul kitab. Most of the Quran is solid ayat. 
و او خانم متشابه هست. از هم آدم متشابه هست. و که از زن، از زن الله سیز لا يعلم تأويله إلا الله. Only Allah knows its interpretation. So only the mutashabihat not understandable. What is the mutashabihat? What God is, okay, like about the God. Okay, why? Because brain can only compare to the existing thing. God does not look like any. Means brain cannot understand what God is. We say that's mutashabihat. That's it. Finish. Rest, we can understand. Why? Quran says. So after this, I will say that's finished. I won my case. Because all of Quran is to be used by brain, you know? That's it, finish. After that, all of the like a beautiful, exciting, flashing stories. Okay, if your brain says one thing and God says totally different thing, just switch off your just all of that is just emotional statements. After that you have to say Zindabad, but nothing else. No any other comment, you know. Anyway, same surah, Surah Yusuf, <coughs> Allah says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ إِلَّا رِجَالًا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِمْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْقُرَى Even before you, we didn't send anything except رِجَال, male, men, okay, مِنْ أَهْلِ الْقُرَى in the different villages. So, they were from that village, okay. Now, in here, just small, uh, small point. Obviously, we Maturidis, we believe that um, uh, there was no any prophet except male. Okay? Mm -hmm. Obviously, there is some statement from Asharis. They even quoted from Shaykh Abul Hassan al-Ashari, Shaykh Islam, saying that uh, it's not a condition. Being male is not a condition of the prophethood. Okay? So, for example, they claim that, for example, um, they say that uh, mother of Musa salam, she was not Rasul but she was Nabi. As well as they say um, Sayyida Asya salam, the wife of Pharaoh was a Nabi. They also say that uh, Sayyida Maryam also was Nabi. Um, obviously they say they say um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وَإِذْ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمِّ مُوحَا إِلَىٰ أُمِّ مُوسَىٰ أَنْ أَرْضِعِيهِ Okay? فَإِذَا خِفْتِ عَلَيْهِ فَأَلْقِيهِ فِي الْيَمْ So, Aya says, we revealed, أَوْحَيْنَا We revealed to mother of Musa أَنْ أَرْضِعِيهِ Breastfeed him وَإِذَا خِفْتِ عَلَيْهِ And when you will be afraid for your child, Musa a.s. أَلْقِيهِ فَأَلْقِيهِ فِي الْيَمْ So throw him to the sea. يَلْتَقِطْهُ عَدُوٌ لِي وَعَدُوٌ لَا My and his enemy will find him. Fir'aun. So Allah says, أَوْحَيْنَا What Allah says, for example, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ إِلَّا رِجَالًا We didn't send anyone before you except رِجَال نُوحِي إِلَيْهِمْ We are sending a revelation. So isn't it that, for example, this is backing up the position of um, uh, uh, Sheikh Abu Mansur? So, uh, Ash'ari say that they are not claiming Rasul, Prophet, Lady, but Nabi, Lady. This ayah is speaking about Rasul. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا We didn't send Rasul, except Rijal. But they are claiming Nabi. And also, some people say that this ayah, obviously this ayah is about Rasul, no doubt. Uma Arsalna, it's 100% about like Rasul, Arsalna. Okay? And the second group said, Rijal in here does not mean male, okay? But it means human. Okay, so only it was prophet, uh, human. Obviously, we Maturis disagree. Why? Because we actually believe that even. For example, the Jinnah, there was prophets amongst them. Okay? Um, even there is ayah, okay? When Allah says, speaks to the jinn and the people, saying, Ya mashallah al jinni wal insi. Okay? Speaking all jinns and human beings. Isn't it that we have sent a prophet from yourself? So, Maturidis, we believe that it's jinn. And human both had prophets. Obviously, obviously, as soon as 
human being was created, Jinnah didn't have any prophet. Because their turn finished. Now it's our turn. So when they used to be as a human being on earth, they used to have their own prophets. So now their time expired. So they are following, for example, the human prophets. Am I right? For example, in that story in which Allah says, Wa isharafna ilayka nafaram min al jinni. Oh Prophet, do you remember when we sent, so a group of a jinnat came to you, when they came to you, قالوا أنصتوا, they said, shut up. Okay, because Rasulullah was praying Fajr namaz. So they just listened to you. Okay. So when you have completed your recitation of Prophet, they just went back to their tribes. Qalu, they said to their tribe, Ya qawmana inna sami'na rasulan, we have heard, inna sami'na kitaban unzila min ba'di Musa. We have heard revelation, which has been revealed after Musa. After Musa a.s. Means, the contemporary jinnah, they follow the human prophets. But it does not mean that they didn't have a prophet. So maturidi position, they used to have prophets in their own time. How do we know that? Because Allah clearly said in the Quran, in Quran, what did He say? He said, "أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم." وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً. So when Allah said to the angels, "إِنِّي indeed I'm going to create جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ I'm going to create on earth خَلِيفَة." What's the meaning of خَلِيفَة? Obviously, all of them will say Khalifa means king. Is, oh, forget all of that is just hanky panky. Why? Because Khalifa, with the meaning of Khalif, it is contemporary use of the word. It has been set up after the death of Rasulullah. Khalifa in Arabic language means someone uh, coming after. For example, do you know uh, Khalifa of Bush is Obama? Mm. Succeeder, or what do they say? Successor. Successor. So Khalif in Arabic. Why? Because Khalf in Arabic language means this. Khalf. So I, I can ask you, Ma Khalfak, what is behind you? Khalifa is the one who will take the back. Behind. So Allah is not speaking about the king on earth, but Allah is speaking about a creature which will replace the previous one. Successor of the previous. Oh. What is the previous one? Jinnat. Okay, but then question, how come, no, because just to back up my point, so Arabic language, that is the Arabic language, but then how do we have this Khalifa, which means Caliph? Because when Prophet died, when they made bayah to Abu Bakr, what did they, what did they call him? Khalifa to Rasulullah, the replacement of the Prophet. And afterward it was, like, uh, it's just new terminology. It is the same as to say, having a bid is Sunnah. But Sunnah does not mean the Sunnah which is in Quran or Hadith, you know. Sunnah means it's fiqh terminology set up after the death of the Prophet by Abu Hanifa, for example. Caliph, Khalifa, is new terminology which is set up after the death of the Prophet. You understand? So Khalifa is successor, replacement to the Jinnat. Or otherwise, so be, just carry on the same ayah, what uh, Angel said, أَفَتَجْعَلُ فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَاءِ Ya Allah, are you going to create there someone who will commit sin and who will shed blood? Why? Because Allah said Khalifa, the previous one, did the same. So that's why I just asked, you know. So, so just because the jinnah do the same, what we're doing now, destroying. Okay, destroying the nature, destroying all of that thing. So they said, uh, so Jinnah did this, so are you going to do successor, replacement, who will do the same, you know? Uh, do you understand? So, um, so means that when Jinnah were there, Jinnah were as we are, you know? Brain is their taklif, okay, they had their own prophets, they had their own like awliya, etc., you know? So their time is expired, now it is our time. That's why... When Adam was created, they didn't have no more prophets, most likely. So that's why they are following our human being prophets. But 
it does not mean that they didn't have a so jinnat and human both had prophets as we uh, say you know so uh, for example some of the ashari is saying rijal in here means human being for us nothing okay but anyway in the same time rijal in here is only about rasuls i agree because huma arsalna min qablika okay as well as as ashari is used wa awhayna ila we revealed to umm musa wahi in in here there are many types of wahi. It's not the wahi that makes you to be a Nabi prophet. Okay? Isn't it that Allah says, with awha rabbuka ila nahlati an ittakhidhi min subuli rabbiki dhulala. Okay? Uh, Allah revealed to the honeybee, follow your way that Allah created for you. Now, does it mean that um, uh, uh, Nahal, honeybees, all of them are prophets. No, it does not mean that. Am I right? Okay. So anyway, it is something to consider. But anyway, just keep in your mind, we Maturidis, we do not say that there was a female Nabi. Okay. But in terms of Rasul, it is agreed upon between us and Asharis. But Asharis say in terms of a Nabi, there was a female Anbiya. Okay, so it is... Uh, say the Maryam and say the Asia and uh, the uh, mother of Musa alayhi, alayhi salam alayhi Musa, all of them okay so uh, it is something to consider actually but we might read it, we do not accept that so Ashri is say three at least female yeah, yeah, be, because maybe yeah. more yeah, yeah. so in terms of uh, Umm Musa okay so revelation this ayah yeah, about uh, say the Asia so the revelation came it is in Quran that Allah promised her like a paradise, okay, just before they ki killed her, okay, mm -hmm. and in terms of uh, say the Maryam meeting uh, Ruh, Jibrail mm -hmm. uh, If you remember, uh, yeah. yeah, in the Surah Maryam, okay, Inni a'udhu bil Rahmani minka in kunta taqiya. Qala Inni Rasul Rabbuki le ahabalaki wula manzakiya. Jibrail is a conversation, okay. Yeah, by the way, we have to speak about this ayah also, this in Surah Al-Imran, because it's just amazing. You will understand so many amazing knowledge of Quran, because in here, Allah says, Ruhana. So, majority say it is Jibrail. Mm. But the title of Jibrail is Ruhul Amin, not Ruhuna, our Ruh. Mm. So, our Ruh. So, it is just amazing thing, you know, it's just amazing thing. So, anyway, <coughs> so that is first thing. We didn't send anyone before you, except male, men, men, Nuhi um, ilayhim, sending revelation to them, min ahlil qura, and they were from the tribes, from the villages. So it's not, for example, uh, Mirpuri will be sent to Punjab, but it's not that, but among them. Okay, everyone from their tribe. Afalam yasiru fil ardi, don't they go? have a journey, travel in the, on earth, فَيَنْذُرُوا and they will look, don't they look? كَيْفَ كَانَ عَنْقِبَةُ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَوْلِهِ How was the, like a, how was the result of the previous nations? In this, in this ayah actually, we have few issues, few issues. So some of the scholars say, okay, saying that it's not permissible for example, Ibn Taymiyyah said, not permissible at all for any reason to enter the places where this punishment came. For example, Pompeii, Vesuvii. You know Pompeii. Okay, or for example, Qomlut, Ad, all of them things. Ibn Taymiyyah said, whatsoever is the reason, is not permissible to go there. Some other scholars said, it's permissible only if you cry. When you walk into the like a ruined cities of the previous punished, cursed nations, you can enter only by crying, okay, but uh, I remember in Hanafi Madhab we said no any condition, mm. why? Quran says, Afalam yasiru, why do they not go to travel, fayanduru, so they will see, okay, kefa kana akibatullah, how was the, like, uh, uh, how was the destruction of the previous nations, mm. so if we follow Ibn Taymiyyah, we'll be opposing this Quran, Amara, this ayah, Again, the rest of the scholars will be opposing it. Because Quran doesn't say, why do they not go and cry? But he says, why they do not go? Without any condition. Means, you can go towards the pyramids, you can go to the Black Sea, you know. 
So you can go to all of them. Why? Because all of that is Iman. It will just build up your brain. Okay. So why to say it's not permissible to go at all or only with one condition that you will cry? Why? Sheikh, how can people make such a big mistake like that? Because then it is like Quran is just being ignored. In, well, like quite clear meaning of Quran. What, what you say is 100% applicable. Maybe even Salafi brothers should accept it against Ibn Taymiyyah. Because Ibn Taymiyyah said, with any condition you cannot go. But in terms of crying, because there are hadith, do you remember, hmm. in Bukhari. So don't go into uh, this. No, they were coming back from Tabuk, the place of uh, Ad. Rasulullah said, it's not allowed to anyone to go in without crying. Khabar is Ahad, mm -hmm. so maybe some Hadithi, hadithi Hanafis or Salafis, they may take it that way. But for us, it's again, for example, Khabar al-Ahad cannot put limits or condition for the ayah. Okay, so, it is, so if you do not, so what about majority of the people do not cry, am I right? Yeah. So means, now we are just saying don't go. Means not taking like reminder. It doesn't even make sense, Shay, because you could have like Muslims in those areas now. Yeah, yeah. People move around. Yeah, relatives. yeah. So you're saying to some, you know, don't even go and visit your relatives in these exactly, areas. Exactly. Yeah, doesn't yeah. even make exactly. any sense. Or like exactly. it's a valley, yeah. a nice place for agriculture, like you know. It's just the biggest, yeah. biggest destruction of this statement is, I say, Makki itself. What about the Ashabul Field? Where it happened? Oh yeah. It happened in Mecca. So is everyone who goes there cries, mm. even in the time of the Prophet, even Prophet himself? Mm. Do you understand? Did he used to cry all the time there? Mm. No. I so it's so something to zoom out, to look and al on other things and to consider it, you know? So that's how we'll build up that like uncle, isn't it? So if you just block us from that, that's it. Now just everything's gone. But they succeeded, isn't it? They, they did actually. We, they we, did. Don't, we, we they never did. thought of that. They did, yeah, they did. So next holiday is 2.5. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just to see. Just to see. But even there is um, a video, a documentary, I think mm. it's a BBC, Last Day of a Pompeii. Right. So it just shows all of that. It's 45 minutes. Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Did, did quite you famous. Yeah, it's quite old now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. There's a movie coming this year, actually. Okay. But I don't think brothers will be happy, but it's a Hollywood movie. Okay. Trailer is, yeah. So disruptive yeah, and also, Pompeii. Yeah, and also uh, BBC made another one, I think, recently some lady, historian, I think, maybe something 50, 55 years old, like doctor, like a scholar, historian, went and she discovered many things in terms of lifestyle of them, okay, and uh, like in terms of slavery and justice and that. So just many good discoveries in Pompeii. Something to consider, actually. Something to consider. And even, do you know that uh, pirates, what pirates, do, what, what that uh, uh, New Age uh, Pompeii, do you know, on uh, South, Af South America, do you know, whole city sunk. What do they call that? Port de la Vega or Port... No, I don't know about it. Do you know, for, do you know that pirates age, about 500 years ago, mm. So people, do uh, you know the ships, like the uh, trading ships, they, were, they used to be scared of the pirates. Pirates from that city actually. Okay. So they were on the peak of their strength and pff, suddenly all of the city went. You can, you can see it on, uh, even on my Facebook, on my wall, but it's just quite old. Mm. You have to go to... So, uh, Port de Royalo or something like that. Port okay. de Royalo or something. It's like it just reminds you the Pompeii. That's all justice, killing, and even they say they used to drink wine with the uh, TNT in, mm. putting in to make it even more stronger, you know. They used to that. <laughs> but Sheikh, today one of the problems we have, unfortunately, like we saw with uh, any time there's like a disaster, I remember even with some uh, things like the tsunami, you know, really sad disasters where many innocent people died. Yeah. Unfortunately, more, uh, certain Maulanas and Sheikhs will stand up and say, uh, like for example in Pakistan there was an earthquake a few years ago, and a lot of people said, oh you see Pakistan was doing evil things, army was fighting against Taliban, so Allah sent punishment. No. Like Japan no. was doing shirk, so Allah sent punishment. No. Uh, they do say this, and yeah, yeah. unfortunately our non-Muslim brothers become very offended when they hear this kind of thing, so they pretend every hurricane, every disaster, like you know in America, if there's tornado, 
they will say, oh, Allah punished them, you see. Oh. Yes, I think yeah. it's a good point, actually. I think there are two comments maybe we can make. The first comment is, um, if you remember, it is in an authentic hadith, uh, say that when Rasulullah started speaking about the fitnas, fitna happening, destruction, so said Aisha said, is it possible, Ya Rasulullah, that we will be destroyed even though if there are righteous people amongst us? Mm. So Prophet said, yes, if evil will be more. Mm. Means, even in the place of disaster, it does mean that everyone is evil. Mm. But only evil spread more. Okay, one thing. And the second thing, I think we have to be very careful in terms of showing the reason of that disaster. Mm. Because we are not the ones who did it, and we do not have a revelation from the one who did that. Yeah, yeah. So okay. Allah knows why. Yeah, we can't say, like, it exactly. might just be earthquake. Yeah, yeah. Unlucky. Like, you know, Allah, it's Allah knows, but exactly. it doesn't yeah. mean, like, they were so, evil. the reason is known just by Allah, you know? No, for so, example, yeah, obviously, I think, it's, we love, because we're into that type of stories, actually. Yeah, like, you know, just make, because, you know, it's, they, they make these weird statements, like, for example, earthquake came in uh, Pakistan, for example, or tsunami came in Asia, why not in Las Vegas? Or yeah, someplace exactly, with much more yeah, around things exactly, are happening. Yeah, yeah. Nothing ever happens in exactly, Las Vegas yeah, yeah. or or like you know downtown Bangkok or yeah, something. Yeah. You know, like it doesn't or, or even her, like Bahrain. It's now actually bad things are happening, but yeah, it, it yeah. doesn't make sense. Yeah. Like you have everywhere bad exactly. things. Yeah. But even for example, floods happen in Mecca. It happens quite often. Yeah. And Mecca is the place of Hajj, hmm. place of Umrah. All the time there are thousands of like uh, Hujjaj and Mu'tamirin. Yes, yeah, it's, it's good point actually. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. So anyway, so, but the main thing in here is, um, so obviously what Ibn Taymiyyah says, no sense at all. For, for any reason is not permissible to go in, okay? Yeah, as, as well as he narrated the hadith in which uh, uh, Imam Ali radiallahu anhu said that Prophet forbidden me to pray in Babel, in Babylon. Hadith is weak, and Ibn Taymiyyah used that as main proof of not entering, even the namaz is not valid in that type of places. Whole of Babylon. Babylon, yeah. And Babylon is a good place. It's like <laughs> empire. It's big, big place, yeah. It's Iran plus many other. Places. Iraq, some of this of Jor Jordan also included into the Babylon. Obviously, there are two Babylon. One is uh, Babylon, which is whole empire, and one is the center, capital city, and even that is called Babylon. Doesn't matter if it's this or that. Okay, so. All of the Sahaba prayed there. All of the Tabi'in scholars prayed there. So no reason of making all these fabricated ahadith. So Imam Ali radiallahu anh never said this. A very it. strange approach to hadith then, because if Sahaba, it's like doubting on Sahaba then, isn't it? Yeah. Because if Sahaba did it, so you should think this hadith is not, yeah. this hadith is not correct. Yeah. So, end of case. Yeah, that's it. No, no, but, but they still carry on using it. So it means Sahaba made big mistakes. Yeah, so it's or only Hanafis, it's yeah. only Hanafis and Malikis no, consider the act and the reaction of the Sahaba towards the Hadith. Okay. And Imam Shafi radiallahu anhu, what did he say? He said, uh, we don't care when Sahabi narrates some Hadith, we don't care about how Sahaba reacts with his own narration, but we care about the narration. That was the beginning of the end. Beginning of the end of the Fiqh uh, way. Right. So not looking at evidence, just yeah, looking yeah. at text. Or, or only the narration. Mm. Yeah, so for example, Sayyidah Aisha said, Sayyidah Aisha said, narrated hadith from the authentic, it is in Bukhari, any lady marries of herself without the wali, yeah. and then she is the one who married off without wali, married off her niece without wali, because wali is the father and paternal uncle. You understand? But, so then uh, Shafi said, we do not look at the narrator, Sahabi, how he acts with his own narration, but we look at his narration. But with us is other way around. So we say Sahabi acting, opposing his own narration, shows that he knows the defect of his own narration. Or someone made it up later. Or that could be another thing, yeah. Because it, the Shafi way then, for like people like, ordinary people like me, it means casting doubt on the Sahaba a bit. Like for example, yeah. Yeah, you see they do things, maybe, means yeah. how you are opposing the Prophet, so it yeah. is good, yeah, good. So it's uh, unfortunately. Okay. Afalam yasiru fil don't they walk, don't they travel, okay, in on earth? فَيَنْذُرُوا So they will see كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الَّذِينَ How they're like a fennel, 
how the uh, uh, result of the previous nations deed was. Indeed, the uh, last day, day of judgment, is better for the righteous people. Don't you use your aql, don't you use your brain. Okay, so what is it about? As I say it is aqeedah. Aqeedah, why? Because the result of me committing sin will be like this. It is aqeedah. It is, means Allah is actually using the brain, I mean encouraging us to use the brain in the field of aqeedah again. Look, I mean, I don't think that uh, if we can like this, we'll finish all of the... Uh, I have. So now we are on page number 4 and we have in total 30... <laughs> yes, so, okay, so anyway, inshallah we'll just um, mention only some of them, up to maybe maybe one hour. Uh, and inshallah after that we'll just go to the next topic about the hadith and then uh, what the different groups say. The first is Salafis, Salafi mm -hmm. brothers, Ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn Qayyum. What do they say about brain, using the brain? It's just infinite, a big number of the ayat where actually Allah uses the ayin qaf lam, the aql, brain. <coughs> the next is Surah Al Anbiya, ayah number 8 or 7, 8, 9, 10. We didn't send anyone before you except rijal, men. Okay, Nuhi ilayhim, sending the revelation. فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ So ask the people of uh, knowledge. Ahl al-Zikr in here means uh, people of Zikr. Obviously, the literal meaning of the ayah is Zikr uh, is إِنَّا نَحْنَ نَزَلْنَا الذِّكْرَ وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِظُونَ We have revealed to you the Zikr, revelation. Okay, so in here, is the Zikr means revelation. Okay, so for example, go and ask the Jews and Christians. That's the literal meaning. Okay, so in terms of the uh, prophets that have been sent. Okay, because when Rasulullah came, uh, mushriks of uh, Quraysh, they said, why Allah is sending a human being? Why he is not sending an angel? So then Allah said, go and ask Jew Jews and Christians who had long experience with the prophets, did we send ever an angel as a prophet or was it a human being? So that was the main thing. Okay, so in terms of... Uh, <coughs> In terms of فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of dhikr if you don't know. In here, uh, most of the people, most of the scholars, majority of Ahl Sunnah and Jama'ah, they say uh, following madhab is wajib. Okay, and one of the proofs they use is this one. If you don't know, you have to ask the people of knowledge. Okay, Fakhruddin Razi, obviously, he opposed them all, saying this ayah cannot be used for that meaning. Why? Because this ayah means go and ask, okay, go and ask Jews and Christians if you don't know this specific matter, okay. So that is the stand of uh, Imam Fakhruddin Razi, but yet majority of the scholars say, but general understanding of the ayah is if you don't know, ask the people who know, okay. So it means asking and following the like a madahib, is just uh, means uh, like asking the people with better knowledge, okay? But then question, um, is it that you have to follow only one madhab? You have to, do you have to carry on asking only one maulana all the time? We say, of course not. So today, for example, you can come to me asking about how to make wudu, for example, okay? And then I will say, I will give you Hanafi madhab because that's what I know. And tomorrow you may just go to, for example, Shafi scholar asking, is it permissible I can eat a crab? In Shafi, it is permissible, and he says yes. So can you follow him, or do you have to come back to me? We Hanafis, all of the Hanafis, okay, the real ones, not the fake ones, we say yes, it is permissible. Okay, so you can come to me asking how to perform wudu, I will teach you, so do it like that. And then you can go next day asking, for example, some Shafi scholar about the uh, crab. Is it permissible to eat it or not? He says yes, but in Hanafi is not. It's not permissible. So can you eat? Because Shafi scholars say to you, yes, means go and eat it, no problem. Okay. So does it mean that you have to, for example, follow, for example, only one madhab? We say no. But we say you as like layman, just normal human being, 
So normal Muslim, you have to ask the authentic scholar. That is your duty. But which madhab he, he is, that's not your issue. But in your understanding, what do you think is the best, most reliable scholar? Or at least, what do you think is the reliable scholars? You can ask any of them. Okay? So it means following only one madhab is not necessary. So then you can mix and match. But obviously, yeah. if so, only one thing you shouldn't do it because you will look into the proofs and you find that one proof is weaker, because you're not on that level to look into the proofs. Mm -hmm. But if that's not the reason for you to mix, for example, from different, we we'll say that that is fine. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I, I probably missed. Um, yeah, yeah. Are you saying like, let's say I'm traveling? Yeah, yeah. I'm Hanafi. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't know the proofs. I'm just follower. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, and uh, I follow because I'm going far away. I follow the Shafi thing. I combine. That's fine. Yeah. But but you have for to. For no ask reason, just my nafs. I I you want have to make to, it easy. You have to ask the Shafi scholar. Oh. How to do it? Oh sure. Just like, do it. Yes. That's it. We we'll say fine. Yes. Just for my desire. That's fine. Yeah. What if I'm st this is, so I'm Hanafi? Yeah. I'm at home and I pray at Shafi time Asad just yeah, to yeah. make it easy for me. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So obviously, if you know, there are two main reasons which majority of the scholars Hanafi say is not permissible. Mm. For example, you are mixing the mazahib. Yeah. There could be many reasons, but m most of the Hanafi say if it's not one of them, two reasons, the rest of the reasons are fine. The first reason is. It shouldn't be, you shouldn't mix the madhahib because you are finding the proofs of some of the madhahib is weak. Mm. It shouldn't be reason. Okay. The second reason is just to please your ego. Okay? Please your ego. Okay? But if you are doing it because of the rule, of necessity, or hardship, or many other reasons, we say fine. Right. Okay? So that is the most like famous opinion. And even, I used to follow this opinion, even maybe very, till very recent. Okay? And after that, actually, the position of Kamal ibn Humam. Kamal ibn Humam says, in terms of making it easy for yourself, it is not any prohibited reason. So the reason which makes you f prohibited to mix the malahib is only one. That you find that Shafi is weaker than Hanafi, so that's why you follow the Hanafi. So this should, no, should not be the reason for you to mix. Because and any other reason, oh. fine. Mm. Even making it easy, according to the majority of the Hanafis, is not permissible. But Kamal ibn al-Humam, actually he mentioned, and he has mentioned just perfect reasoning, saying that even that is permissible. So, Sheikh, you made it very clear actually, but I have to ask, so for example, um, let's say I'm ordinary guy, I'm ordinary. Yeah. I strongly agree with Imam Abu Hanifa yeah, yeah. on issue of prawns. Yeah, yeah. So I think like completely spot on. Yeah, yeah. I know I don't have a right, yeah, yeah. but I think, you know, prawn is not a fish. Yeah. Like to me, and like many people would, okay. so, but then, like, isn't it hypocrisy for me to go against it? Even like, I have feeling that it's correct. <laughs> Okay, Marshall is a really, really good thing. So according to our like uh, Hanafis, the latest Hanafis, we say like a muqallid, the person who does not reach the level of ishtihad, his opinion is not valuable. So for example, I will go to the doctor, mm. like uh, he's cancer researcher. Okay, so he may give me some reasoning and I may not accept it. Mm. But is my not accepting, is it like uh, opposing his understanding or not? No, Do you understand? Yeah. Because he is experienced person. Mm -hmm. So unless you will build up that, for example, like a thing, you cannot, for example, accept or reject the position because of its reasoning. Right. Do you understand? But you accepting and not accept, of course that is there, mm. because everyone has brain, you know. Yeah. But that is not uh, good enough for you, for example, to accept or to reject. So my feeling that, just, I'm not insulting yeah, yeah. you, but... Yeah, yeah. Just my feeling that Shafis are wrong yeah, about yeah. prawns. So, yeah, it's yeah. not worth anything. Even yeah, to exactly. Me. So if you will give fatwa, no one will accept. Or no one has a right to accept. That is one thing. But that is about fiqh. Mm. But in Aqidah, you do not have a right to do it, actually. You have to look into the reasoning. Yeah. Okay, you have to accept it. Mm. I mean, you have to look and you have to make your own way, actually. Oh, it's like the cleed, isn't it? Yeah, People yeah. mistake that I'm following in fiqh. Yeah, so yeah. now also in Akida, no, same no, th th yeah. That's, yeah, that's different. And all, I even, there are some opinion, okay, in which even some of the Maturidis say, the Iman of the Muqallid is not permissible. And this issue, 
the belief of the muqallid not being permissible is specifically about believing or disbelieving in God. For example, I've been born in Uzbekistan, so that's why my father is, for example, he's Muslim, I'm Muslim. Some very minority of Maturi said his Iman is not valid because he's muqallid. But don't we have a good point, Sheikh? Yeah, of course. Um, we say majority, we say it is valid, but he's sinful for not looking. And there is one thing which any belief which is not reached to the level of certainty that is not a belief. Mm. Means if, uh, for example, Maturidis say, we have to look into that person. If his father will disbelieve, will his son also disbelieve or not? If yes, means uh, his son's belief was not belief any, uh, like uh, at any time, you know? Never. It was not believed at all. But if his father will disbelieve and son will carry on believing, then Maturi said that is valid, but he's sinner mm -hmm. for not looking into the proofs of his belief. Okay. So it's similar to Ashari position. But Ashari, no, but Ashari said it's not accepted at all. Latest they accept they followed us, but earliest ones, Imam Ghazali before him being Mutasofar, Fakhreddin Razi. Imam al haramain Juani, all of them said, okay, so the Iman of the Muqallid is not accepted at all. He's kafir. But doesn't it? Uh, I'm, it I'm makes sense. That's, it that's makes exactly sense. the position of uh, Mu'tazil also. Yeah, it makes sense, yeah. Why not? Because, because we're saying, like, let's say I was born into, like, Hindu brothers. Yeah. So then I would do the same. So yeah. isn't it like blindly following anyone? Correct, the same yes. thing as Correct, yeah. Mm. Obviously, we might already say, in terms of, is it valid Iman or not? In, uh, in terms of God, Allah knows. But as for us, acting with Him as a Muslim or non-Muslim, right. that is sufficient. Oh, that makes sense, actually, yes. yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so He can marry Muslim lady, okay, sure. and when He dies, we pray Janazah, okay? So, and when He seeks for, like, a, um, a support, He's ill, it becomes wajib for the Muslims. So all of them things, actually, you know? So, um, knowledge is amazing, you know, but you have to find the uh, authentic knowledge. So, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ So, according to Fakhruddin Razi, this is not good enough to uh, prove the madhahib thing, okay? But the rest of the scholars said it's actually a good valid point. وَمَا جَعَلْنَاهُمْ جَسَدًا لَا يَأْكُلُونَ الطَّعَامَ وَمَا كَانُوا خَالِدِينَ Obviously, when Qurayshi said, why God sent a human being as a prophet? Isn't it that God, if, he, if you would be a prophet, okay, God would send an angel. So Allah is just saying, even before we have sent a human being, go and ask Jews and Christians, okay. And we didn't make our prophets to be only body, the body which does not eat and does not drink. Okay. And they were not infinitive. They died. Just human being. Okay. ثم صدقناهم الوعد فانجيناهم ومن نشأوا وأهلكنا المسلمين. And after that, we kept our promise of saving them and destroying the rest. Okay. Saving them and whoever we want to save from that from that tribe, and we have finished off and destroyed the rest. لقد أنزلنا إليكم كتابا فيه ذكركم. And now we have revealed. You the book, okay? Fihi zikrukum, and in there we are reminding you, okay? The book which reminds you, afala taqiluun. So don't you take, don't you use your brain, okay? I say it's actually about, uh, uh, it is about the Quran. So understand the Quran is also aql. It is the duty of aql, okay? Inshallah, uh, I think we'll just go for a short break. Alhamdulillah, <sighs> Rabbil Alameen.